Hey everyone, greetings from Redding, Pennsylvania. I'm at the top of Mount Penn, and behind me is one of Redding's biggest attractions, the Pagoda. It's five floors. It's currently closed right now, but you could still walk the perimeter, and I'm gonna give you some of the views from uh, the Pagoda. So down below here is the observation area that anybody can go to, whether the Pagoda is open or closed. And then out here you have the city of Redding. So that's downtown right there. Um, you could see that's the arena. Across the street is the Double Tree, which has, I believe, been rated one of the top Double Trees in the country, if not number one. And again, we go back down to the area which you could walk. And then when we go off over here, we have, I guess this would be the south side, but I want to point over here, that brick building over there is where Redding ends. And to the left is the small borough right there of Mount Penn. And then on the other side of these mountains over here is Philadelphia. So you can get a view all the way around here. And then this is the parking lot right here. So this is the fifth floor slash observation deck of the Pagoda. That bell right there was transported via the Suez Canal. And although this area is enclosed and not the best for photography, you could definitely get the most panoramic view from here. So one thing we were not able to see at the lower levels was the smokestacks. So on the other side of those smokestacks over there, that would be the direction of Philadelphia. So my first food stop in Reading is at Judy's on Cherry. I'm in the downtown area, not far from the arena. And I have a seat here where I can watch the chefs. There's the oven. They have pizza here. And generally speaking, it's mostly a Mediterranean menu. This used to be a farmer's market in the 1800s. Then it was a brewery. And since 2000, it's been a Mediterranean restaurant. I'm at the Reading Area Firefighters Museum with Dick Boyer, who's a retired fire chief. He's one of the museum directors. And Dick, can you explain what you're about to show us? Yes. Uh, in 1873, you, you must know that there was no uh, electricity. Uh, so there had to be a, a manner in which we more efficiently transmit alarms of fire. Uh, the previous method was to run to a firehouse uh, or run to the courthouse where they rang the bell in the center of the town. So they bought about 30 of these fire alarm boxes, put them at key intersections throughout the city, and the signal was transmitted via uh, telegraph wires to City Hall. And then from City Hall, the signal went out to all the fire stations. Uh, very simply, if you discovered a fire, you would open the door, pull down the hook, the signal would come into each fire station. This is the number of this box. As you can see, the tape machine punched out 124. It also rang the bell, which you could count, and the indicator at the very top also showed the box number. So the firemen came out from wherever they were in the station. They would check their alarm board. And yes, they did respond on first alarm to 124 box, 4th and Spruce. That happened to be a location of a very large lumber yard in the day. Now, when this stopped punching four rounds of 124, then in fact, it would start again and ring all of the tower bells and church bells that were connected to the system so the volunteers knew where to go. How did they know? Well, every year our local newspaper uh, printed a calendar and a list of all the boxes. So if you were a volunteer, you counted the bells out on the front step, you ran back in the house, you looked at the chart, yup, your company goes. So it was a very efficient way uh, of operating 
a modern day fire department. These boxes were put out of service in uh, 1982. I happened to be a deputy chief and I was, had the privilege of running the last fire for a box, for a fire pull from a box. And uh, I'm proud to say I bought that box at auction and have it in my house. Well, thank you, Dick. So you'll start your tour in this room. What's now the local fire company started back in 1771. And you'll get to see some fire trucks here. And then in the other room, you could actually see a photo of everyone that was on the original crew. And there's a second floor which you could visit, which has grand rooms that were for meetings, socializing, things like that. But right here is the picture dates all the way back to 1854. Hey everyone, I'm in downtown Reading in Goggle Works, which is a repurposed 1871 Goggle factory. I'm here with Emily. Uh, what is your position here at Goggle Works, Emily? I am the adult programs manager. Okay, and where are we standing right now? So right now we're in our Schmidt Gallery on the second floor of Goggle Works. We have an amazing show right now. This is called Violins of Hope. It's put on by the Jewish Federation of Berks County the Reading Symphony Orchestra. It actually took three years to get this show here. Um, all the violins you see are restored after the Holocaust. Um, they are restored by a second generation uh, musician from Tel Aviv. Okay, and also what other kind of things can people do here if they're coming from out of town and want to experience Goggle Works? So Goggle Works is a great place to come. We're open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. It's free entry. We have galleries here on our first floor. We have classes that people can take in ceramics, woodworking, printmaking, uh, virtual reality, hot glass, warm glass, jewelry making. Um, so it, like I said, it is free to come in and check out. We have studio artists, resident art organizations. There's also a theater. Um, yeah. And what's going on in this printmaking studio over here? Sure, so today we have a screen printed tote bag class. It runs from 12 to 3 p.m. It's full of students. Um, everyone will be screen printing their very own tote bag, learning about the process of screen printing, and then going home with something unique. Okay, well, thank you for the tour, Emily. I'm at the corner of 6th and Penn Avenues in West Reading. So this is just on the other side of the bridge that separates West Reading from Reading proper. And this is my favorite street to eat on in all of Reading. And right behind me, you have a cheese uh, restaurant that also has a little deli inside. And as you continue up Penn Avenue, you can find everything from taverns and across the street, you have a lot of little small bo clothing boutiques, antique shops, and you can buy soap here. There's also this little Chatty Monks Brewing Company, which has an Indian inspired menu. And they have Diwali celebrations going on this weekend. And if you continue up here, uh, you have a candy store right here. And when you cross the street, you can see over here, there's a Thai restaurant. And continuing up here, uh, a lot of places to drink. Uh, right here, you have Mexican food, Mexican grill. And then on the other side of this street is one of my favorite stops in all of West Reading. Uh, 80 cakes. I go, I go here for cupcakes and it's right on this side of the street. So they've been featured on the Cupcake Wars and this up here is 7th Avenue. So a lot of the food stops you're going to see in West Reading are between 6th and 7th Avenues along Penn and right here you have it. Try the cinnamon sugar cupcake. It's one of my personal favorites but they're always changing their options. And if you continue up here, I'm now walking east in the direction of Reading proper. This crepery up here has been around forever. Uh, one of the first places I ever ate in this area was right here. And then we get right back here. Uh, this is currently occupied by a Thai restaurant. Years ago, it was a French uh, Belgian place. So all kinds of boutiques here up along Penn Avenue in West Reading. So now I'm a few miles outside the center of Reading. I'm at the Mid-Atlantic Air Museum. In that hangar behind me is a dozen or so different planes that still fly. And at this private airport, 
They also have some old planes like Eastern Airlines, which has not flown for years. There's the hangar again. And then there's also Capital Airlines. So these planes, you cannot enter them because they are still capable of flying. And like an old classic car, they do take them out from time to time. There's a US Coast Guard plane. So inside the hangar, they have a mix of private, commercial, and different kinds of planes. And throughout the East Coast, every year they take these to different air shows. So if you attend an air show, you very well may see one of these from the Mid-Atlantic Air Museum. So I'm at Jimmy Kramer's Peanut Bar in downtown Reading. This is a Prohibition era local bar that's been here since 1933. And when you sit down for dinner here, they give you a bowl of peanuts and you just throw the shells on the floor. So I'm in my time here in Reading at the Reading Public Museum. I'm in one of their temporary exhibits, which is called From Medieval to Metal. And the walls all around are lined with album covers. And then there are also guitars, some are encased. And then this one here is for practice. So behind me it says, take the stage. And there's also a cover of Def Leppard's On Through the Night debut album, which I happen to own. Um, so anyway, this is the Reading Public Museum. Uh, the first floor is a lot of history and sculptures. The second floor is a lot of art. I'm in a temporary exhibit right now for medieval and metal. And I'm gonna practice a little bit and say goodbye and hope that you all make it out to Reading.